What's going on Aurora Alliance and welcome back to a brand new Star Wars Battlefront 2 video and in this video we're going to be talking about the Star Wars Battlefront 2 reinforcements for the clones and the droid sides which we got to see at EA Play. Reinforcements can be bought with battle points and I will be covering what battle points are and how that system works in a later video and you can buy these reinforcements with battle points at the end of your life so once you die and you end up in the class selection screen you also have your list where you can spend your battle points and then once you've selected one you will spawn back into the game as whatever you have chosen for that life. While playing as reinforcements you can actually earn battle points still whereas heroes once you have selected them and bought them with your battle points heroes cannot earn more battle points so if you select a hero and then you spawn in you can't earn more battle points so that when you die you spawn in as another hero unless you have already earned them before you played as the hero. With reinforcements though, if you use your battle points to buy a reinforcement, when you spawn in as that reinforcement, you will still be able to earn battle points. So sometimes it can be a really tactical thing to do to spawn in as a reinforcement and spend a certain amount of battle points. And then while you are playing as that reinforcement, you will earn the battle points back that you have spent and then more to get you closer to however many battle points you actually want. For the clone side at EA Play, the reinforcements consisted of the N1 Starfighter, the V-Wing, the AT-RT and the clone Jump Trooper. Each one of these reinforcements have their own unique abilities as well, as well as their own health points, so every single reinforcement is unique in its own way. Clone Jump Troopers have two abilities, the Rocket Launcher and the Jump Pack. The rocket launcher for the clone jump trooper is extremely powerful and does kill enemies really quickly. It also does a lot of damage to heroes, so I imagine that will be changed before the game releases. The jump pack is a really cool ability, but at the moment it recharges a little bit too quickly, so it does get quite spammy. The ATRT has a motion scan ability and an ion charge ability. The ion charge ability is a really useful ability for taking out any droid vehicles that may be being a nuisance in the game modes. But it is not wise to take on the droid vehicles head on with the ATRT as you can be killed quite quickly while using one. The motion scan is pretty straightforward, but it is a really useful ability when you are playing as an ATRT and it helps you rebuild your battle points that you have spent in buying the ATRT. The V Wing has three abilities and they are speed boost, laser barrage, and heat sink. I didn't play as the V-Wing too much, but when I did play as it, all of the abilities felt really cool. It felt a bit like the A-Wing in a way from the first Star Wars Battlefront. And the Laser Barrage was a really cool ability for taking out any droid vehicles, whether they were on the ground or in the air. The N1 Starfighter was probably my favourite vehicle in the Star Wars Battlefront 2 Assault on Thief gameplay at EA Play. The Astromech droid actually repairs your N1 Starfighter in a similar way to how R2-D2 repaired Luke Skywalker's X-Wing in the first Star Wars Battlefront. The weapon overcharge ability allows the vehicle to fire a lot of shots within a short period of time and the proton torpedo can be a really useful ability to use if you are struggling to kill any droid vehicles just using the blasters. The reinforcements for the droid side consist of the Vulture Droid, the Troop Transport, the AAT and the B2 Super Battle Droid. The B2 Super Battle Droid has two abilities, the Cool Cell and the Wrist Rocket. The Wrist Rocket is basically the equivalent of the Rocket Launcher that the Clone Jump Trooper has, and the Wrist Rocket is again very powerful. The Cool Cell just allows the B2 Super Battle Droid to fire as many shots as possible within a given time period. The Cool Cell is a really useful ability to use against any enemy heroes that are charging towards you. I remember killing a lot of heroes by just activating the Cool Cell while I was the B2 Super Battle Droid because you can just hammer as many shots as possible into them and you end up killing them off pretty quickly with it. The AAT has three abilities, the Linked Fire, the Siege Mode and the High Explosive Shells. The Linked Fire actually activates the cannons on the left and right of the AAT. It can be a really useful tool to use and I found myself getting a lot of kills with that ability. The Siege Mode activates the main cannon on the AAT and it works really well if you are getting close to the palace doors on Assault on Thede and then you can just sort of sit there like you're seeing me doing and then hammering shots into the entrances of the palace. The high explosive shells work really well for killing any enemies who are in front of your AAT and you might not be able to look down at the ground with the cannons so the high explosive shells all fire straight out of the front and do quite a lot of damage. The troop transport has two abilities and that is scan and linked fire. 
and the troop transport is the tank that you are escorting down towards the palace on assault on Theed. So once you get close to the palace, if you can use the troop transport, you are going to get a lot of kills and a lot of battle points to help you get towards your heroes. The Vulture Droid has three abilities, Speed Boost, Laser Barrage and Energy Torpedo, and these are all pretty self-explanatory. I wasn't a big fan of the Vulture Droid, they were very nimble though, they had quite a lot of movement to them and they were really good in that sense, but when you were trying to take down an N1 Starfighter with them, the N1 Starfighter could just heal itself using the Astromech Droid, so they didn't feel that powerful. However, for doing strafe runs, the Vulture Droid is perfect. I really do like the reinforcement system in Star Wars Battlefront 2, I really like it a lot more than the token system in the first Battlefront, and I'm interested to see what reinforcements are available for the First Order, the Resistance, the Rebels, and the Imperials. Let me know down in the comments section below what you think about the reinforcement system from what you have seen, and if you have played it, let me know what you think. Make sure to smash a like on this video if you have enjoyed it, and if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to join the Aurora Alliance, and be kept up to date with all things Star Wars Battlefront 2 and other Star Wars games. Other than that, may the Force be with you.